our Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor your name tonight. We acknowledge your mercy. We acknowledge your goodness. You are the beginning and the end of it all. The Yahweh of Judah, our protector, our deliverer, our strong tower, our shield, our savior, our buckler, the keeper of our souls. Lord, we honor you. The ancient of days. Father, we bless you. Thank you for bringing us into the second half of this year. We could not have done it by ourselves. But Lord, you watched over us. You broke the snare of the fowler. Our souls have escaped like birds out of the snare of the fowler. Through the storms, through the rain, through the heat, through the issues, we're still standing only by your grace. Papa, we declare tonight, praise waits for you at Redemption City. Adoration waits for you here, my Lord. Glory and honor waits for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, tonight, stretch forth your hand. Do that which only you can do. Baptize by fire. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Save souls. Cleanse. Empower. Deliver. Uphold. In the name of Jesus. Let nothing stand in the way of the move of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because we know you are here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will manifest your power. Thank you, Lord, that tonight is the beginning of the best of the rest of our lives because you will do us some things. Blessed be your name, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. All the glory and honor be to God our Savior tonight. And first of all, I want to thank my Heavenly Father, and Jesus, my Savior, for the privilege of sharing his word tonight. Hallelujah to Jesus. And to my mom and dad, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, for the honor of preaching tonight. God bless you, dad and mom, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that your great legacy will endure, you will finish well, you will end well, and you will receive your eternal crowns of glory in Jesus mighty name the theme for this month is refuel your fire my anchor scripture tonight is from leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13 leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13 a fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never go out may your fire continue to burn now and always in the name of jesus and tonight i'm just wondering what comes to your mind when you hear the word fire light burning flames explosion fervency passion there's nothing like timid fire try a matchstick it will still burn you so when we talk about a christian on fire it's about passion for the things of god it's about zeal it's about faithfulness it's about demonstration of god's power burning at both ends for god in jeremiah 20 and verse 9b jeremiah 20 verse 9b the bible says but his word was in my heart like a burning fire shot up in my bones i was weary of holding it back and i could not from now on you will spring forth the fire of God in the name of Jesus. You no longer be weak. You no longer be powerless. You will no longer be timid in the name of Jesus. Like our theme says, it says, refuel your fire. So when we talk about your fire tonight, it's personal to you. As a divine response to God's vessel, it cannot be borrowed. You can't borrow somebody else's fire to accomplish God's purpose. You cannot live on another person's fire. I remember the five wise virgins. When the five foolish virgins asked them in Matthew 25 verse 7 to 9, they said, please borrow us. Give us some of your oil. And the wise one said, no. Go and buy your own. 
it won't be enough for you and I. So I want to say to us tonight that God is expecting that like never before you will catch fire. That you will go out there and you will do exploits in his name, in the name of Jesus. You need the fire of heaven. God wants to contain his fire within you. So that you and I can become men and women of great passion. Who are continually filled with the holy fire as it came on the day of Pentecost. Something happened on the day of Pentecost. Fire came from heaven. And the Bible says they were all filled. Fire will come from heaven tonight. It will not be denied you. It will not be truncated for you. You will become a carrier of God's fire in the mighty name of Jesus. However, we need to constantly refuel to keep fire burning. What does it mean to refuel? Very simple, refuel. It means where there's no fuel, the fire would go out. What is fuel to you tonight? Fuel simply means the presence of God, the power of God. And I dare say to us tonight, it is that ability of God that turns an ordinary man, that turns an, an ordinary woman to an extraordinary carrier of power. Like he did for Elijah. We were told yesterday night by Daddy Gio that Elijah first of all called down fire from heaven. He called down water from heaven and then on your life so that your fire keeps burning. To refuel is to top up. To refuel is to refill. To refuel is to replenish. So why would I need to refuel? Why? Why do I need to refuel? Number one, when you are in constant use of the power that God has given you, when you are there raising the dead, you are there evangelizing, you are praying unto God, you are witnesses, you need to refuel. Jesus, our Savior, told us in Matthew 14, verse 23, the Bible says, after he had sent the multitudes away, he himself departed into a mountain alone to pray. To recharge your battery, you need to be alone. There is something about solitude that helps you to recharge. Every time you expend spiritual energy, you need to go and refill so that you do not burn out. Why do I need to refill? Number two, to ensure that you will have enough for the assignment ahead. The assignment of today, you have sufficient strength for it. For the assignment tomorrow and in the days ahead, you need to consistently refuel so that you are not stranded. Like the parable of the ten virgins that we spoke about, in Matthew chapter 25 verse 4, the Bible says the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Jesus told us in Luke 12 verse 35, Luke 12, 35. He says, your lamps must be always burning. That's why you need to carry extra oil. That's why you need extra capacity. That is why you need to constantly refuel. And number three, which many of us may not be aware. Sometimes the enemy could punch holes in your tank when you are not spiritually alert. The enemy could punch holes in your tank when you are not spiritually alert and the person begins to leak and you don't know how much fuel has been leaked. In Matthew 13 verse 25, Matthew 13 verse 25, he says, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. The man didn't know until his servants drew his attention that there are tears amongst your wheat. People may be pointing out to you that your tank is leaking unaware to you. Pride may have set in. There may be disobedience. There may be arrogance. There may be self-delusion. So what will a wise man do? Before you refuel, you look for the source of the leakage and then you deal with it. Because it is possible to carry your car to the source of the fuel. But if there is leakage, all the fuel will pour out. From today, by the power that is in the blood of Jesus, every source of leakage in your life shall be sealed in Jesus' mighty name. The early disciples 
were constantly being refilled. We were told in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. It says, and they were all filled. Nobody was left out. And spoke with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. In Acts chapter 4 verse 31, it said again that when they had prayed, the place wherein they were assembled was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness god wants us to be constantly filled he doesn't want you empty too many of us are empty we are leading on empty we are walking on empty we are walking as if there is no tomorrow but i want to assure you that unless you catch the fire tonight things may not work out for you as you intended but the lord would have mercy upon all of us in the name of jesus we need the active presence of the Holy Spirit for the needful fire at this time. And the only way it would come is through prayer. The word of God says that when they prayed, fire came. How much time you devote in prayer, how much time you devote in worship, how much time you devote in solitude to God is what will bring the fire that you need. You are wondering why you cannot evangelize as you ought to. It's because you lack the fire. You are wondering why you pray for people and the results are not there. It's because you lack the fire. But tonight you are going to go out of this place as extraordinary men, as extraordinary women, and the fire will begin to fall. People will take note of you that you have had an encounter with the Spirit of God tonight. And the fire is beginning to flow in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Fathers and mothers, my brothers and sisters, no one can be hungry or thirsty for fire for you. No one can be hungry for you. You are the only person that can be hungry for yourself to win souls, to be bold, to cast out demons, to exercise divine authority. No matter the encouragement, you are in this meeting tonight. Are you here spirit, soul, and body? Or are you just an attendee? attendee? Is your heart yearning for more of God? That Lord, I lack this power. I lack this fire. I don't want to go out the same way that I came in. I want to tell us tonight that you are the only person that can determine to be zealous for God. That's why our coach keeps pushing us to seek more of God's power. From the beginning of this year, we've been hearing about fire, fire. How many of us are yet to catch that fire? Tonight before you Six. go, something Matthew will happen five in your life. Tells us, a this is blessed expression of the spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus. God has designed for us human beings. That's the way he created us. To need continuous refilling. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. Matthew 5 verse 6 tells us, he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst are recurring appetites. You can't say, I ate yesterday, or I ate five years ago, and I'm, going to, I'm not going to eat anymore. The same way, hunger for the things of God. In Psalm 63, it says, my soul longs for the things of God. In Psalm 42, it says, as the deer pants after the waters, so my soul hungers for the things Tomorrow I'll of do God. it. Tomorrow I'll pray. The good news Tomorrow tonight. I'll win souls. Tomorrow I will spend time with God. Is that there God. are refueling stops we are in our busy. journey of life? There are we are too busy doing stuff. Stop. Instead of getting close to God, we are, we are busy. Even in ministry, some of us are so busy that we don't have time to pray. Or we are too lazy. Indolence in spiritual matters, spiritual slumber, half asleep, half awake. It's too difficult. The inability to rouse yourself to pray. Negligence. To pray, to fast, to study. God is saying, enough of that. I want to do something new in your life. We are not to ignore the warning signs when your gauge is on red. It simply tells you your tank is almost empty. So when you find yourself, you are becoming irritable, 
you are focusing your mind on the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh the pride of life things that never used to happen to you before is beginning to happen to you then it means that your gauge is reading red you need to stop and refuel you need fresh fire fire the holy spirit is our refueling point so don't miss the word don't miss your timing don't wait for the altar call be now begin to tell the lord how much you desire it. begin to speak to the lord i don't know what your neighbor desires i don't know what you desire but i'm here for fresh fire i'm here for an outpouring of the spirit of the lord i know there are people here who are hungry so begin to prepare yourself because fire will fall upon us the fuel that you need is available for sale the bible tells us in isaiah 55 verse 1 to 3 isaiah 55 verse 1 to 3 he says everyone that is thirsty come and buy come and buy without money incline your ear listen to me there is an invitation he says come and buy without money in proverbs 23 verse 23 proverbs 23 verse 23 he says buy the truth buy the truth of god's word tonight so it's available for sale how will i buy without money jesus has made it possible by the finished work of jesus on the cross of calvary everything that you need to refuel for fire to begin to flow in your bones has been fully paid for by jesus christ all you need to do is to come to the source god is the source of fire He's the one that gives the fire by the power of, you, of his Holy Spirit. And he's saying, come, come and buy tonight. Don't be empty. I have more than enough. I am the God of abundant supply. I have more than you could ever need or desire or think. And he's available unto you tonight in the name of Jesus. So how do I refuel quickly? Number one is access to God in prayer by the help of the Holy Spirit. How do I refuel? access to god in prayer by the help of the holy spirit jude 20 jude verse 20 he says build up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost is there prayer in the house of your heart we're not talking about empty words but wholehearted devotion are you praying and crying out to god what are your prayer points like he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest god is inviting us tonight you and i this entire congregation wherever you are watching from all over the world and he's saying i want to refer you but you've got to humble yourself and come in the place of prayer romans chapter 8 verse 26 romans 8 26 the bible tells us that the spirit helps us in our weaknesses he helps us to pray he energizes you he equips you pray in the spirit pray in your understanding pray when it is convenient pray when it is not convenient pray when you are tired pray when you are not tired nehemiah was a man that kept refilling his tank i read in nehemiah in one chapter alone nehemiah chapter one he prayed seven times you can never pray too much thank god that we are in a mission that puts emphasis on the ministry of prayer on your way to work pray instead of joining conversations that you have no business with in your office under your breath be praying pray in your spirit when you don't know what to do pray ask the lord for help he uh, he answers and he will refer you in the name of jesus christ number two the word of god the word of god is your potent weapon jesus himself taught us this principle in matthew chapter 4 in luke chapter 4 matthew 4 and luke 4 every time the enemy came at him and satan said do this he would say it is written is the word of god engraved on your heart or you only have it in your head if you only have the word of god only in your head it won't do you much good 
soak yourself in the word in psalm 119 verse 11 he says thy word have i hid in my heart that i may not sin against you hide god's word in your heart joshua 1 verse 8 joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do the to do is important he says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success you must begin to study the word of god afresh the early disciples focused on the teaching the doctrine of god don't let anybody mislead you the word of god is powerful the word of God in your heart and in your mouth is very, very powerful. The Bible says in Romans 10, 10, Romans 10 verse 10, with the heart a man believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let the words of your mouth and the thoughts of your heart agree with the word of God that you are a man and a woman set on fire in the name of Jesus. Number three, develop the heart and spirit of a worshiper. When you develop the heart and spirit of a worshiper, Psalm 34 verse 1, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. When we praise and we worship God, something happens. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Wherever God is, there is fire, there is power, there is purity, there is holiness, there is grace, there is intense measure of his presence. So spend time worshiping God. Spend time being grateful unto God. Paul and Silas in prison in Acts chapter 16. Acts 16 verse 25 says, As they prayed in prison and sang praises, God had them. They didn't have musical instruments. They didn't have backup singers. They didn't have the latest gadgets. Just their mouths and their hearts and they began to worship the Lord. Can somebody shout and say, Thank you, Jesus. As their hearts and voices rose up to the Lord, there was a powerful visitation. You want to see fire? Begin to worship the Lord more. And the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. Number four, associate with people who are already on fire. Why? So they can tell you where to refuel. They will tell you this, this and this and these are the things that I did to refuel my fire. How do you know those who are on fire? They are resolute in their faith. They are men and women with the passion of Elijah. Their lives are fruit of what they profess. Let them guide you. Let them mentor you. Let them push you. Let them encourage and propel you towards your goal. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13 and verse 7. Hebrews 13, 7. It says we should remember them that have the rule over us. That we should follow their faith. Considering the outcome of their conduct. When you genuinely participate in a powerful meeting like this, then you are locating a refueling stop. I pray that the Lord will help us tonight to refuel. And then, number five, deepen your consecration. Keep the fire burning. The temple must be ever increasing, not decreasing. No drawback in the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 14. 2 Timothy 1 verse 14. He says, that good thing that was committed into your hands, keep it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You must keep returning to the source of your fire. You cannot exist by yourself. Exterminate all fire extinguishers. Anybody who will not help you to make heaven is a fire extinguisher. Remove every impurity. Fire is contaminated by impurities. I can assure you that the fire is pure. But the tank may be contaminated. It may be dirty. Or maybe there's even water. So you don't get optimal results. So what do you do? You clean out the tank. Sin kills fire. All forms of unrighteousness and ungodliness must be out of our lives in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I plead with you tonight. If you are in this gathering, at the time our beloved daddy comes... And he ministers the word and he gives the altar call. Be the first to run out here. The number of years 
you've been coming to Redemption City is immaterial. What is important tonight is that you recognize that you are empty and that I need a fresh infilling. And God will genuinely save your soul and put your name in the book of life. As you begin to commit yourself to prayer, to word, to worship, to divine relationships, power will flow. Your tank will be filled again. There will be new dimensions of God's anointing and grace will be imparted unto you. God will help you. God will be gracious unto you. So you begin to open blind eyes. You begin to heal the sick. You will begin to raise the dead. You will begin by the power of the Holy Spirit to minister to people and they will give their lives to Jesus in Jesus mighty name. So please rise with me tonight and we are going to be making declarations. Shall we please rise? In the name of Jesus. You are going to declare that according to Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Please say it with me. According to Acts chapter 10 verse 38. I will be anointed with fresh fire. The Holy Ghost will brood upon me. And release tremendous power. I will go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil for God is with me I carry God's fire I will no longer be empty and dry so shall it be in the name of Jesus now lift your right hand and say father please set me on fire help me to hunger and thirst for things of eternal value to win souls for you in the name of Jesus, shall we lift up our voices and begin to pray. Father, please set me on fire. Lord, I'm desperate for this fire. Born in me a hunger and a thirst and a passion to be refueled by your power, by your grace, by your mercy, by your glory, by your anointing. In the name of Jesus, I will no longer be weak and powerless. I will no longer be tossed up and down. I will no longer be tossed to and fro. In the name of Jesus, I receive power tonight. I receive fresh fire tonight. I am no longer an ordinary person. I have become extraordinary. I walk in the supernatural. I walk in God's grace. I walk in God's power. In the name of Jesus. And then finally you say, Father, Father, turn me into a burning flame of fire. 